Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we're going to embark on possibly one of the more ambitious projects that you can do as far as resource farms go in your Minecraft world. We are going to start a witch farm today, and witch farms, you might be wondering why exactly witch farms are so popular. You probably hear a fair amount about them if you are investigating what happens on Minecraft servers or in single player worlds in Minecraft what people's priorities are in terms of farming resources. Witch farms come up quite a lot and the reason for that is that witches drop a whole bunch of stuff. In fact in terms of drops they are some of the more diverse mobs. They tend to drop things which are explicitly used in potion making because if you fought a witch before you will know that they tend to fight you not physically or really at range using like you know weapons like bows the way pillagers or skeletons do instead they throw potions at you and so a witch's drops tend to be related to potion making they drop glass bottles they drop glowstone dust they drop redstone dust they drop gunpowder they also drop spider eyes sugar and sticks <laughs> i don't know quite why they drop sticks might be some kind of monty python reference there in that they're made of wood or something but sticks are in there too and there are a variety of things you can do with that for a start having renewable glowstone dust is quite important especially by the time you've explored a good portion of the nether because glowstone is very useful as a light source is a key component in crafting redstone lamps and is quite difficult to come by if you're on a multiplayer server where people are after those resources in large quantities. The same goes for redstone, really, because redstone can only really be acquired by digging it up from the ground or, I guess, occasionally from redstone devices found in generated structures like, you know, jungle temples and that kind of thing. But there is no real way of farming redstone aside from farming witches, so that becomes a very useful thing later on. Obviously, if you find enough redstone ore and you fortune it, you'll probably acquire a decent amount of redstone dust just by doing that, but witch farms can be incredibly useful to redstone intensive. <laughs> Minecraft players. Likewise we have just made a giant creeper farm in order to gather more gunpowder and having a witch farm also gives us yet another source of gunpowder besides the general mob farm here. Fighting ghasts, fighting creepers, the creeper farm that we have over on the mushroom island we also get gunpowder from witches so that's going to be especially useful too. The spider eyes I don't really care about. I have more spider eyes than I ever plan on using at this point. But you might want those and the sugar for converting zombie villagers into regular villagers because that's part of the ingredients for a potion of weakness. You need a fermented spider eye in order to make one of those. So those come in quite handy as well. And some people have in the past had high enough output witch farms that they can fuel an entire super smelter only using sticks. So there are huge amounts of uses for the drops that you will get from witches and it makes it incredibly useful to set up a witch farm. Now the thing about witch farms is that location comes in very important and that's what we're going to look at today is exactly how to choose the location for your witch farm because there are a bunch of considerations. First and foremost being if there are multiple witch huts in an area. Basically, if you manage to get more than one witch hut within a space where you can stand between them and guarantee that witches will spawn, remember that mobs will instantly despawn or will not spawn at all once you get 128 blocks away. So if you have two witch huts that are within a 128 block radius of a place that you as a player can stand, then build a witch farm there. There are people out there who will even search for seeds which have more than one witch hut or up to four witch huts in the same swamp area so they can set up a quad witch hut farm. Now, unfortunately, having scoured my world seed for such opportunities, I don't think we have a space that I can do more than one witch, witch hut at once. But that is really for incredibly high output farms. So just one witch hut will probably do. Next, you have to consider how possible it is to convert the area around it into an area where there are no mob spawns, because to work most effectively, like other hostile mob farms, witch farms have to have as little spawnable space for other mobs nearby as possible. Basically, anywhere that the hostile mob cap could be taken up by other mobs, we want to spawn proof that, making it so only witches can spawn in the vicinity of the witch hut. And your typical witch hut spawn locations are going to look like this. This is an area out here in a swamp where 
we have a witch hut present and I think this is actually where I came to get the black cat when we were looking for cats in the Taming Cats episode. So here is your average witch hut. It's got a cauldron in there. Sometimes witches will spawn in there. Sometimes they won't. A lot of the time they will spawn with world generation and it looks like we do have one over there in the trees that might actually have stepped out of the witch hut at one point and escaped. But these actually have a bounding box that is hidden to the player unless you're using a mod like bounding box outline reloaded which I will probably revisit at some point so that I can show you the bounding box of a witch hut but they actually have a bounding box in which witches can spawn and if you set it up right you can get multiple witches per like pack spawn in much the same way that you see enderman pack spawning in our enderman farm or creepers pack spawning in the creeper farm the same kind of thing can apply now the thing about a witch hut's hitbox uh, in terms of the bounding box on the outside is that it is quite small relative to other spaces like a nether fortress for example is going to have a huge space in which nether fortress mobs can spawn in the right conditions whereas the witch hut hitbox is pretty slim so we need to convert this into an area that witches are going to be able to spawn en masse and then convert the entire countryside around into something where nothing is going to be able to spawn whatsoever and remember that's 128 block radius that's a spherical radius so that also includes below the player in any of the caves and so forth that may spawn underneath this swamp so that would be a heck of a task not only that but if we fly up into the air here i will show you a little bit so if we want 128 block radius that means that 64 blocks all around us uh, basically in every 64 blocks in every direction from here would be a 128 block radius if we want to spawn proof 128 blocks around this witch hut around the position a player would stand when afking at this witch hut kind of you know in a, in a position where witches can spawn in this hut but nothing else around can spawn that involves a couple of things first of all you might want to position your afk spot up in the sky to allow for as few as possible of the caves underneath the witch hut to allow for mob spawns, which would be a sensible thing to do. But of course, that also would count high places within 128 blocks of the area. Those would still potentially be valid spawning spaces. And so we have to count 128 blocks away from roughly the center of this witch hut. So let's say here, that's, 100 and, that's 1,268 on the z-axis. So let's fly 128 blocks over there. So we'll get to 1,140. And I'll show you exactly how much that encompasses because yep, that does kind of include this mountain top over here, almost. But there is a section of extreme hills over here or mountain biome, I guess they are called now, which would require spawn proofing. So this entire mountainside needs to be spawn proofed or it just needs to go a, a lot of the time when people make witch hut perimeters they tend to just flood the entire 128 block radius with water allowing you to uh, to basically have a spawn proof space while keeping everything roughly at sea level and it works out because witch huts will only ever spawn in swamps so that is typically the environment you'll find a witch hut in what I'm going to say for this case is that this area is not ideal for terraforming a witch hut area, like a perimeter around the outside, simply because we have so much high terrain around here. So ideally what you want to look for is a witch hut with as little terrain around it as possible. Here is a witch hut in a neighboring biome. Oh, and the witch has noticed us <laughs> and is currently buffing herself so that she can come and attack me. Well, this looks like it might be a little bit better, but once again, we do have a birch forest over here with a little bit of hilly terrain. We have a mountain that's probably just about on the outside of the radius, and this is quite a land heavy swamp as far as this area goes. Like we could flood all of this out. We could chop down the terrain. We could make a perimeter. We could do all of the grindy stuff necessary to convert this witch hut into a witch farm. But I can go one better than this. And fortunately for me, the place I can go one better than this is actually right on my doorstep, or near enough at least. We have the swamp here that comprises most of Old Town, where our general mob farm is and everything like that. And then over here, thankfully out of range of the general mob farm, which I might have to move otherwise, we have another section of swamp, and right out here, on the very edge of this swamp, adjoining the ocean, we actually have a solitary witch hut over here in the distance. And this is an incredibly fortunate spawn. For a single witch hut, this is kind of ideal, because not only do we have 
a minimal amount of terrain to take down here. The area is pretty much all already flooded, which means we have to do so little actual work in order to prepare this witch farm to be a spawning haven for witches. Now, the problem with that, of course, is always going to be downwards. There is going to be a fair amount of cave stuff under here. In fact, I can probably see a decent amount of it just by swimming through this ravine. There might be little offshoots of caves to one side or the other, but I love the the change in water quality as you go through to the swamp. It's always super atmospheric. But yeah, there might still be caves around here that mobs will be able to spawn in. And so what we need to do is make sure that the entire area around here is spawn proofed inside the caves as well. Now, of course, spawn proofing for general purpose mobs generally just means lighting the area up if you need to. You don't have to flood everything out. You don't have to slab or place buttons on everything the way that you do in the nether. You can just light stuff up because zombie pigmen are the only problem in the nether when it comes to mob spawning because they all spawn in any light level. Hostile mobs in the overworlds, you don't have to worry about that problem. They will spawn in light levels of seven and below, meaning if you light everything up adequately, you don't have to worry about hostile mob spawns anywhere else. But the first thing we need to do is establish a perimeter of 128 blocks around this witch farm and see exactly where we will need to take down terrain, which is going to interfere with our hostile mob spawning, because I would like to do that. I would like a giant bubble of sorts around this witch farm and then we can plan our next moves of how the farm is actually going to operate. So today's episode is going to be prep. We might do a little bit of terrain taking down, and we're going to do that in the form of a time lapse.
Well, folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. And here we are inside the giant perimeter of our witch farm. And as you could probably see from the time lapse, there really was not all that much terrain to take down at the end of the day. We ended up just removing the remnants of this little island there, that island there, and a bunch of the swampland in the surrounding area. But it is worth noting that this is not necessarily the only spawnable space for hostile mobs, and that leads us to the next big problem, the sheer amount of ocean around here. Because the drowned can spawn down there, and as of the update aquatic, drowned are going to be able to spawn in these areas in the uh, in the ocean around here, which is going to mean hostile mob spawns, which is going to potentially reduce the rate of our witch farm, which is why you will find a lot of people when they create a witch farm in an area like this completely drying out or removing all terrain in the area. Usually if it's a, a, a witch farm that they're building in a swamp, you'll find them like exploding the surrounding environment with TNT and that kind of stuff also helps you get rid of caves underneath the surface. And in terms of this perimeter around here, I'm not entirely certain if we're going to be able to do that. At least it's going to take a long time to do that and it's going to be a very intensive project and I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it up plus keeping up all of the schedule with the survival guide being five days a week and so forth. Otherwise we're just going to be doing a lot of work on the witch farm day after day after day. So what we're going to do instead is crack on with this project regardless. We're probably going to do some lighting up of caves underneath the ocean floor, but I'm going to kind of take it as read that any drowned that spawn in this area are going to be relatively few and far between and hope that the witch farm will kind of take priority as far as mob spawning goes. That may be a little bit misguided for now, and in future I'm sure we can do a lot with this. We can dry it out, we can basically, you know, TNT the whole area out to bedrock if we want to, and we can create the optimal spawning space for a witch farm. But realistically, right now, that is a huge task and is not something that we should be tackling at this stage. At least, if unless you're a grindy madman, which personally I am not. I don't really tend to do the, the kind of whole hog projects all that often. But right now, this circle is probably one of my proudest things. This is a 255 block wide circle, and it would be 256 for it to be, you know, 128 blocks from each point on this on this witch hut. I mean, it'd be 200, uh, 256 blocks would be 128 block radius circle. The only reason I didn't go with that is because the witch hut here is an odd numbered structure. I think the overall footprint of the witch hut here is something like nine by seven. So we, <laughs> we kind of wanted it to be an odd numbered circle, but plots.co.uk, the circle generator I was using, does not go beyond 256 blocks wide because who would want to build a circle that wide? Turns out witch farmers, that's who. So, so this has been quite the project and it really only took about I'd say two and a half hours to build this entire circle and clear out all of the terrain and that was on a stream so you guys will be able to catch the VOD of that on my stream VODs channel or on Twitch while it remains archived there and that's phase one of the witch farm but that is all we are going to cover for today. We will look at things like kill mechanisms and lighting up caves and all that kind of stuff in the next episode. But that is where I'm going to leave you for today. So thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been PixelRiffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.